All right, cool. Uh, hey, John, welcome back to another conversion focus website review. Uh, today, we're going to take a look at a brand called Aisling Organics. And we actually had uh, one of their team members on our podcast, Joanne Coffee. She is a delight and they're doing a lot of really fun stuff on the marketing side of things. They're doing some stuff on TikTok about, um, you know, how to use their products. And they've actually mm -hmm. got like a one hour, um, you know, personal makeup consultation strategy session that then I'm guessing cross sells or upsells into actual product offerings based on the recommendations you get there. So doing some innovative stuff in the e-commerce space. And uh, I thought we'd, you know, return the favor for them coming on the show by uh, giving them a teardown today. So uh, we'll take a look at their site and I'd love to get your first reactions here as we've got everything loaded up. We've got the discount pop-up that we see so often. Um, maybe we'll comment on that and then dive into the homepage. Well, I, I'll, before even the pop-up, I just say there's so much going on here. Mm -hmm. um, I already felt a little overwhelmed with the multiple messages, long messages in the bar up top. Um, the understated logo doesn't really, you know, kind of gets lost in the mix of the um, busy image of the brushes on the left. Then you've got logos along the bottom. Um, and then you've got this pop-up, which has a pretty busy background with a lot of text over it. So yeah. that's my first concern. I don't know why you wouldn't just say free gift when you subscribe. 10% off, I you know, is, again, I'm not a big fan of dollars or percentage offs. I think it's the easy button. But they're giving a free gift too. So just eliminate the 10% and go for the free gift. I think it will perform just well. Um you know, there's a lot of text. It's pretty hard to read that little text down on the bottom, um, you know, with the disclaimers. But I know a lot of that is necessary when you're asking for texts right now uh, for phone numbers. So that's interesting. Um, I do love the I don't like pop ups. Um, <laughs> I can find that funny and also very relevant to this conversation. Um, look, I, I can understand if they made this an exit intent, but to have it come and pop up as soon as you get to the site, it's a little much. Um, at least make it so that it's on like a certain percentage of scroll if you really want to interrupt, which I wouldn't recommend doing. Um, definitely on exit intent. Um, but to have it load as soon as somebody gets to the site is just, um, it's a little much. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, it's interesting that they're going straight for SMS here, which I don't disagree with that. I think it's smart mm -hmm. probably to pick one or the other, but there's not a whole lot of priming to let me know that it is a text message that I'm opting in for. So many consumers are used to seeing this for email and then to see this plus one, I bet a lot of people type an email address in there, right? And and try to do that and get an error message and can't really figure that out. So even like a phone icon or just changing this to be when you subscribe to SMS alerts or something like that might be a little bit more priming and all the priming I need to know exactly what I'm committing to. Um, I think that's interesting. And then I saw the, the button copy here says, let's go shopping. I'm willing to bet, of course, I'm not going to put my phone number on this recording, but I'm willing to bet that if I put my phone number in there and I click that button, I actually don't go shopping, right? Like the, mm -hmm. I probably get a text message with the discount code and it probably doesn't drop me into, you know, some kind of storefront. It probably drops me right back onto the homepage where I already was. Um, and, and I have to kind of figure things out on my own from there. So it's just a little bit of misalignment between what you're saying is going to happen and what actually happens. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm wrong there, but that would be my assumption. Um, yeah, okay. that's a good, that's a good, good point for sure. All right, so let's uh, close out the pop-up. As you said, there's a lot going on here. We've got live chat in the bottom right. We've got that pop-up kind of sticking around, a little bit of a sticky pop-up down here in the bottom left corner. We've got, uh, we always call it the free shipping bar. Some people call it the welcome mm -hmm. bar, the hello bar. We've got a promotion up there. And to your point earlier, like probably the most muted thing on here is the logo that tells me that I'm in the right place for wherever I came from, that search result, that ad, whatever. Um, it, it's kind of counterintuitive to me because they've got this really strong like script A here that I think is beautiful and, and goes with like a, you know, a makeup brand, a feminine brand, that kind of thing. Uh, I would just use that up here in the navigation and then keep Aisling Organics next to it, right? But you have this kind of mm -hmm. icon that starts to get associated in the consumer's brain of like, you're in the right place. Anytime you see this script A, uh, that's something for Aisling. Exactly. Yep. On the same page there, for sure. Um, I would stick to one message in the, the, the hello bar at the top. Um, Definitely free shipping is what works best, or even if it's free shipping over X dollars. Um, but having a lot of words like shop our newly formulated all-inclusive mascara, that's a lot of modifiers, plus <laughs> lash separator bundle. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just a lot to digest. Um, I, I'm not a fan of that copy. I would just, you know, say, um, you know, just say shop our, our lash and mascara and lash separator bundle. Like, keep it pretty simple if you really want to get the message across. The, the problem is people are just looking at this for a brief second. And so my guess is if we did eye tracking on this, we'd see that people aren't reading that entire line. Um, they're probably glancing at it and then moving on. Um, next is the navigation. I'm not a huge fan of staying shop. Um, I would almost rather that they take, you know, the five um, items that make the most sense and put those there. So what is that? Face, eyes, multi-sticks, lips. Um, and then you could do something like accessories. Um, like save on sets is really kind of, and you know, put a set under each of those where, where the item is in the set so that people know shop all you can get rid of, um, if you do this correctly. And then, um, swag really goes under like accessories more than anything else. Um, you know, so I don't know what a multi-stick is, but where does that go? Does that go under face eyes, both, right? So put it under, under the categories where it makes the most sense. Um, obviously I'm not the ideal target market (laughs) here, but (laughs) I think that there's some quick, easy ways to get that down to five or six items for your navigation. Um, then you can get rid of bestsellers because I'm never a fan of having that in your navigation. Uh, the problem is that it really is not that great of an introduction to your brand. Um, the problem is that most people go there and you're just continuing that flywheel with only the best sellers. And what happens is there becomes a clear divide where your best sellers keep selling better and better and everything else keeps dropping, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're pushing the best sellers even more. Um, So it really doesn't help you as a brand uh, show everything that you are helpful in selling to, um, to your consumers. Uh, the match quiz, I'm, I'm a fan of quizzes, but not really in the navigation. I'd, I'd rather see that as maybe the main call to action here, like, you know, want to get started, do something with, you know, with the quiz. Um, and then about, I, I'm not a fan of putting in a, in a BTC, uh, consumer concept, right? B2C or direct to consumer. I'm not a huge fan of having nav items that talk about yourself. Um, so about if people really want to know about Aislinn Organics, they're going to go down to the footer and look for more information on the brand um, or continue to scroll down this page. So having that up there is kind of a wasted um, opportunity for, for a nav item. Yeah, I agree with all that. One thing I'll call out is we are very much not in the target market here, but that's kind of the point. We always say you can't read the label from inside the jar. The Aisling team uh, is probably in this every single day. They know their products inside and out. They're probably users of the products in a lot of cases, right? So you're so close to it that even uh, simple terminology like multi-sticks, like I don't know what that means. And if I'm shopping for a stocking stuffer for my wife this Christmas, I don't know that she might love a multi-stick. I don't know. Or I might buy it and it doesn't apply to her routine or something like that. So there is like using uh, the language that is intuitive for your entire customer base, not just your core customer base, the one that you must identify with naturally, right? Um, Mm -hmm. The one thing that jumps out at me moving down into this hero section is it's being used to highlight a specific product. Don't necessarily disagree with that, but I think this is a great piece of real estate to, in general, uh, use to show the full breadth of your product and what makes you stand out. And so all the different offerings maybe spread out on a countertop and um, just say something about, you know, how they're ethically sourced or something like that, whatever Mm -hmm. your differentiator is, I think that's a great place to do it. And if you decided to go in that direction, instead of featuring one product, featuring kind of an assortment and showing all of the things in this dropdown, then I think this CTA button here being the quiz makes a lot of sense. It's like, we do all these great things. They all have the same property that's appealing, whether it's ethically sourced, you know, uh, chemical free or something like that. Uh, If you're into that, if you've bought into that premise, let's help you figure out where to get started because it is, you know, makeup lines have a lot of different options and and there's a lot of exploring to do. So the quiz is the best way to kind of have a shortcut, a personalized shortcut to that. So I think that'd be mm-hmm. interesting to experiment with, maybe test that against a featured product uh, like this. Do you have anything else on the hero section or we can keep scrolling? Yeah, I'm, I agree with you on the quiz aspect and maybe working in a little bit more about what makes Aisling different. Like what, what is, why shop them over a competitor? Um, and then I'm not a huge fan of the copy. Our setting powder can help set your foundation, concealer, and sunburns. So I'm a little confused why 
it's setting a sunburn. I'm not, I don't know what that means. Right. Again, maybe target market issue there, but it's really confusing um, to, to me. So um, at the logos, you know, those are recognizable logos for a lot of folks. Um, but are folks shopping makeup really interested in Forbes or entrepreneur or medium? Um, I don't know. Um, I, I would anticipate unlikely. Um, but also, I don't know that I put these logos right here. I would probably put them down the page a little more um, just because I bet if we did eye tracking, as I mentioned earlier, we'd see a lot of eyes go to these logos as opposed to reading the content around it. They're looking for that social proof aspect. And and to some brands, that's reinf- uh, you know reassuring. Others, it's like, hey, it, it reinforces that they are, you know, people are looking at them. That means that they're helpful when in reality, they're just end up being a distraction. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's okay to maybe have in touch or beauty independent here, but like you said, Forbes, medium entrepreneur, maybe that's a better place to have in this next section I can see, which feels like the founder story, right? This, I'm guessing Chris mm-hmm. is the founder. Um, you know, she had all these years of problem caused by her makeup. So she started Aisling Organics. Sure. So say Krista has been interviewed by Forbes or published in a medium mm-hmm. publication or something like that. Maybe that'd be a cool place to go. And then you get rid of this about link in the primary navigation because there's a CTA button here that says, you know, learn more about Krista's story, learn more about the company's background, whatever. Um, that makes a lot of sense. But I think it's super smart to put an embedded video here just from a storytelling perspective, right? A lot of bra- mm-hmm. brands kind of glance over that. They get right into the products. I do think makeup, because there are so many makeup brands out there, one of the ways that you can differentiate yourself is have a founder that people kind of fall in love with, for lack of a better term. And so I think like yeah. putting this, maybe it doesn't belong directly under the hero, but having this on the homepage somewhere feels like a good move to me. Agreed. You know, I, I love this and I think that's a great freeze frame it, it, it really makes me wonder like she seems like she's full of energy right mm-hmm. and makes me want to listen to it so yeah yeah uh, all right so let's move down looks like they're going to get into the bundles that reminds me of something that uh, i noticed earlier but didn't speak about which is like use bundle in this kind of homepage hero section here as the mascara and lash separator bundle mm-hmm. but then in the shopping navigation link it's calling them sets and i don't know if those are two different things mm-hmm. but just little terminology like that being consistent with that um, if they are in fact the same thing could be better uh, for you just so everybody knows what they're buying. Um, but they're calling out a specific bundle here. It's kind of a lot of text. Um, that's not really, doesn't seem to have a, enough vertical spacing maybe between the paragraphs, but like step one and step two are pretty um, condensed on top of one another. And just feels like this is one of those things where a little bit of space between the image and the text on the right, a little bit of formatting could make this a lot more intuitive and easy to consume from the user perspective. Yeah, totally on board with that. And um, I, yeah, I don't know. Bundled is better. Doesn't really intrigue me. What? Why would I want the bundle? Right. Yeah, I think that's an example of. Uh, I always say uh, clarity is greater than cleverness. Right. Like people want to use copywriting to share the personality of their brand, and I don't disagree with that. But you still you can't lose the clarity of like where this button is going to take me. And I might think this is taking me to shop all the different bundles, uh, but really it's mm-hmm. probably going to take me directly to this lashes bundle. And so having an experience that where the expectation doesn't align with the outcome, um, that's always usually a poor experience for the consumer's perspective. So um, awesome. But I like the product photography. And I think in general, this is a, a great use of the space to kind of call out a specific product. Usually we'd see categories in here. So it's a little bit odd to jump straight to bundles, but I imagine a lot of consumers don't buy like a single piece of makeup unless they ran out of something, right? So bundles mm-hmm. is a great way to try a new brand. You get a couple of different things going together, or maybe you need the tool to use the makeup. And so they have to come together almost or else you wouldn't be able to use it, that kind of thing. Um, looks like we're going to call out another product line, tinted lip oils. Same kind of feedback here from me, I guess is just, um, maybe this is a better CTA. I mean, that repair my lips. If that, that's what the lip oil does, if it's not about, you know, coloration or something different, uh, looks like it's all about hydration. So clever use of the bold mm-hmm. text here to call out, um, specific points. I think you could probably get that message across with iconography here, right? Like a, a water drop and just say like intense hydration, you know, seven hydrating oils, whatever, mm-hmm. like something like that with a three icons side by side might get the same message across with zero words almost. Um, but I like this product lockup is calling out a specific item. Yeah. Yeah. I would almost say just a bullet list of those main points, as you said, or the icons would be great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The, these big blocks of text are likely not getting read. Right. Yep. Uh, okay. So then let's see almost to the bottom of the homepage already. This is kind of your uh, reassurances, right? Promises, trust building, that kind of thing. Uh, I think this is smart. A lot of brands don't have this on their homepage. They have it maybe on a product page. And I do think it is um, pretty savvy to 
have a big, and again, here's the, here's the logo brand I would use everywhere, right? That's, that's super recognizable and makes me understand that all of this is Aisling. But um, yeah, in general, I like that, uh, I haven't read the copy yet, but I like that they're giving kind of a trust building, you know, um, there's no risk, all reward. That's a clever phrasing there. Um, I like this mm -hmm. section. Yeah, I'm down with the guarantee, but the they have the badge for the guarantee, but the three below it don't talk about the guarantee at all. Right, I'm seeing that now, yeah. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out what's the guarantee. Um, yeah, this image appears know. to just link to the homepage, so it doesn't go to like you know a, a, a page mm -hmm. with more detail on some of those promises. But that's what I was expecting to see. So maybe that's a good call out there. Is like I was expecting this to be you know um, try for 30 days, you know fast free shipping, whatever stuff we typically see there. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case here. This is like, we're your best friend now. Uh, our number one priority is finding you clean beauty products, that kind of thing. Yeah. Again, mm -hmm. another misalignment between like what we were expecting to see and what we're actually seeing in front of us. Yeah. And I'm all in for the funny memes, by the way, on the best friends. So feel <laughs> free to send them over. Nice. Uh, but this one's kind of getting to it, right? If, it, if something's damaged, if it doesn't match the color that you want or something like that, um, we'll make sure it gets resolved and ship it to you for free, that kind of thing. So that's that's kind of there, but that is a lot of text. So it's almost like yeah. take this stuff and break it up into the three pieces and just say like satisfaction guaranteed or whatever. You know, um, a lot of people promise outstanding customer support. So that's kind of table stakes now. But however you want to characterize that, I think, yeah, I would just reorganize these three things to be about three aspects that all kind of track back to this no risk uh, I'll reward guarantee. Yeah. I mean, you could just say if our products don't meet your expectations for any reason, we'll replace them free of charge. Yeah. I would put the, this icon on the left side and just say that on the right side mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. and just be done with it that way. Uh, okay, cool. And then we get into an Instagram feed here. Uh, I don't know. This is going to a URL that is forward slash number two dash Insta dash feed. So I'm not entirely sure where it's going to take me, but it doesn't seem mm. at first glance like it's going to take me away to Instagram, which I usually is our default recommendation is don't take somebody to social media. They'll never come back. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm with you on that. And, um, likely this is going to do a popover, um, with more details. Hopefully they've made it shoppable. Yep. There we go. Um, and then, doesn't yeah, so it like doesn't it. see how you can actually, I would include a link in these that allows you to shop that product that's being shown. Um, I like the view on Instagram just from a standpoint of like, Hey, if you want to go see what the comments are, great, mm -hmm. but, um, not making that the, the, the big CTA here. Um, but yeah, they're missing an opportunity to make these shoppable. If I'm like, Oh, that, I like that color. I like that, that product that sounds interesting to me. Now, how do I get it? Right. And then yeah. it says like link in bio. Well, which that's great on Instagram but it's not great for these pop-ups. So, um, take a look because the, most of these plugins, allow you to make them shoppable. So I would highly look at uh, what the options are there. I think that's a big missed opportunity. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, like you said, sending over somebody over to Instagram, like they're not going to buy from you today. Maybe the next best thing, especially for this business, is to get a social media mm -hmm. follow or an SMS subscribe. So it's happy to have that in the yeah. pop-up. Um, and I like that this was not a carousel, or at least I can't figure mm -hmm. out a way to move through it. So like we always hate to see carousels because they usually don't get used. Um, this seems like if you're going to do it, <clears throat> do it this way, but make it shoppable and you should be good to go. All right. And then we'll get down into the footer section here. I can actually close this 10% off so we can get a good view of it. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty underwhelming, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, right? There's beauty and simplicity. So what's your reaction to the footer section here? Well, I, I like that they're pushing a CTA uh, for the email sign up, but the, the text above it's pushing for the SMS. So which, which is it? Um, focus on one call to action and go from there. Um, and then they do tell them, you know, how, what they're going to be emailing them, but they don't say how often they're going to get in touch. Um, so if I join that community, how you're going to text me once a week, once a month, every day, um, I, uh, some heads up and priming there will go a long way. Also letting me know I can unsubscribe or stop it at any point in time is important factor um, that people will reduce fear and help conversions. And then you really need to link to a privacy statement here, just like a really brief, like, hey, we'll never sell your information, full privacy statement here, something of that sort. Yeah. Um, and then in the footer, they really need to, uh, you know, James, when you send this over to them, I would highly recommend sending over the article on, on a footer, um, ideal mm -hmm. footer as well, because I think they're missing out a big opportunity here. Um, you always want in that left-hand side of your footer a column with all of your product categories, right? So repeat that main navigation 
that we talked about uh, with the products. Repeat that here on the far left side and having a column with that. In the middle should be all these miscellaneous links, the um, rewards, terms of service, the shipping, the ingredients, et cetera, should all go there. And then on the right hand side should be the contact information. Now I see they have a contact us page, but they're really missing the opportunity to build a bunch of trust here. If you don't know who this brand is, um, you know, a lot of folks, it's natural to scroll all the way down, look in that footer to see if they're sharing their contact information. If I have an issue, can I get a hold of them? And so they want to see, consumers want to see an email address, a phone number, and a physical address, ideally. All three of those will go a long way. James, you've kind of coined it the trust trifecta, which I love. Um, and I think that's a, a missed opportunity here to build some trust with consumers. Yep, totally agree. We'll send them that article because it is kind of, there There aren't many things in CRO that are templatized and you know they're going to work every time. That's one of those things where like, maybe it's not 100% confidence, but changing to it is generally an improvement over something like this. Um, the only two things I'll call out, one, I would put this uh, email sign up CTA in some kind of a box or something with a colored background just because it's kind of getting washed out with all of the, the mm -hmm. white um, put it in kind of a centered box there. I'd make the text a little bit bigger with a headline that just says, you know, subscribe for SMS updates or email updates, and then the descriptor underneath. Um, either that or put the footer on a colored background because right now this is just a sea of white and therefore nothing really stands out uh, or, or catches my attention there. Um, so yeah, I think, I think overall they're doing a pretty good job here at Aisling and I think they're doing a lot of interesting things on the marketing front. I'd love to see, uh, the website reflect that a little better maybe. And the one thing I'm seeing that was like almost totally absent here is kind of a category lockup, right? That anything that shows mm. all these different, this is the only place that I can go to see all the different products you offer. And that's not even hundred percent true because it just says face, right? But you might have five products right. that all go on somebody's face. And so I can't really see you know, the full breadth of the product portfolio anywhere on this homepage, yep. unless I click into individual um, categories or I go here to the shop all page and I just see everything that's in yep. here. So maybe that's an indicator of a smaller product catalog and that's okay. There are ways to work around that. Um, but otherwise I'd love to just see, you know, a lockup with like however many categories you have, right? Maybe, maybe it's about five or six here and just have a tile for each one with an image background that, you know, shows what it is or whatever, and just let folks go and explore there. If they specifically want face care, eye care, whatever, let them go where they want to be. Yeah, I completely agree with that. All in all, I mean, they've obviously been fairly successful with this site, but I think there's some stuff here that could take them to the next level. Hopefully it's been of help. Yep, yep, totally agree. All right, John, we'll let you get back to your day. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your expertise, and we'll have you back to do another one real soon. I look forward to it. Thank you.